Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the monthly jobs numbers release of here at Deed. We're excited to join you again after a couple of uh, a couple of weeks without um, uh, jobs numbers uh, release. We got Commissioner Verlach here, who will give us a rundown of the numbers along with Angelina Wynn, and I'll turn it over to them shortly. As usual, please keep your microphones muted. We'll do questions shortly after this. You can put them in the chat, or you can use the hand raising feature, and we'll get to that at the end. So, uh, Commissioner Verlach, over to you. All right, thanks, Devin. Happy March. Uh, thank you all for being with us this morning. Uh, so we can have a look at our most recent employment data. Uh, let's start with continued job growth, which we're happy to see. So Minnesota gained 3,000 jobs from December to January, meaning the state has seen job growth for now nine out of the past 12 months. Uh, growth was especially strong over the month in education and health services, which gained 2,600 jobs. In trade, transportation, and utilities, we saw a gain of 1,100 jobs. And Angelina will go into more detail on uh, some of those items in a few minutes. The 3,000 jobs Minnesota gained from December to January amount to a 0.1% monthly job growth overall in January, with the private sector up 0.2%. Uh, government jobs, however, lost 1,200. At the national level, U.S. total non-farm employment and private sector employment were both up 0.2%. When it comes to labor force, we saw a small decrease of 1,981 people over the month, which nudges the labor force participation rate down one-tenth of a percent to 67.9. The national labor force participation rate held steady at 62.5%. So just to put those numbers in context, Minnesota has a total labor force of about 3,093,000 as of January, and the labor force participation rate in Minnesota remains one of the highest in the country. Given the continuing strength of the economy overall and of employer demand for talent, we of course see it as more important than ever here at DEED that we deliver workforce development programs to help prepare more Minnesotans to enter employment, and on that note, just wanted to flag for you all that later this month, we will announce the grantees that will be implementing what has become one of our signature efforts in this space, namely the Drive for Five. Once again, as you've heard us say before, this is an innovative job training and placement initiative grounded in industry sector partnerships designed to align employer needs with uh, training programs in five high growth fields that also offer family sustaining wages, namely technology, trades, caring professions, manufacturing, and education. And it's also worth mentioning, funding for this program was approved in the historic 2023 legislative session. Getting back to the data now, um, when it comes to the unemployment rate, we held steady at 2.7% in January of 2024, which is the same as the revised uh, December 2023 rate. And as for the US unemployment rate, it held steady at 3.7%. Next, moving on to wages and inflation. Average hourly wages for all private sector workers in Minnesota increased 56 cents to $37.46 in January 2024 over the month. And that is an increase of one point, or rather $1.78 or 5% over the year. The consumer price index, which is, of course, a common inflation measure rose 3.1% over the year in January. So if you compare those two figures, that means wage increases outpaced inflation by 1.9% over the year, which ultimately is good news for workers and for household budgets. So with that, I'm gonna hand things off to Labor Market Information Director, Angela Wynn, for a deeper dive into the details. Angela, over to you. Angelina, sorry, over to you. Thank you, Commissioner. I'm going to share details by super sector now. So five super sectors gained jobs over the month in Minnesota, five lost jobs, and one had no change. So the five super sectors that gained jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis are education and health services. Um, they gained 2,600 jobs, which is up 0.5%. Trade, transportation, and utilities gained 1,100 jobs, up 0.2%. Leisure and hospitality gained 800 jobs, up 0.3%. Professional and business services gained 600 jobs, up 0.2%, and information gained 100 jobs, up 0.2%. Um, the super sector that saw no change over the month is other services. 
And the five super sectors that lost jobs over the month are government. So government lost 1,200 jobs, down 0.3%. Manufacturing lost 500 jobs, down 0.2%. Financial activities lost 300 jobs, um, also 0.2% decrease. Mining and logging lost 100 jobs, down 1.4%. And construction lost 100 jobs, down 0.1%. So overall, the gains um, are bigger than the losses, and uh, our state gained 3,000 jobs over the month on a seasonally adjusted basis. Um, and as Commissioner had mentioned, that is a 0.1% growth rate. Our private sector gained 4,200 jobs, um, up 0.2%. And after annual revision, uh, Minnesota's unemployment rate for January is 2.7%, which is the same as uh, December's revised rate. So no change in unemployment rate over the month after annual revisions. Next slide, please. We're going to talk about our labor force. Um, labor force size decreased about 2,000 people over the month. Um, the number of employed decreased by 133 people and the number of unemployed decreased by uh, 1848 people. So overall, our labor force is about uh, 38,000 workers smaller than it was pre-pandemic in February 2020. And after annual revisions, the labor force participation rate ticked down one tenth of a percentage point to 67.9, but it's been hovering around 68% um, for a long time, and it is um, much higher than the, the national labor force participation rate. Next slide, please. And here we look at over the year uh, job growth by super sector. So over the year, Minnesota gained 29,045 payroll jobs, which is a growth of 1%. Uh, the US over the year growth rate is 1.9%. Um, Minnesota's private sector gained 14,894 jobs, which is a growth rate of 0.6%. Uh, U.S. private sector grew 1.8 percent by uh, uh, in comparison. So noteworthy growth happened in uh, four super sectors. They are uh, for Minnesota. They are education and health services um, gained 23,649 jobs, which is a growth rate of 4.3 percent. And uh, this growth was propelled by uh, growth in the healthcare and social assistance sector especially nursing and residential care facilities and social assistance uh, sectors. The U.S. grew at a similar rate uh, for this super sector at 4.2 percent. Um, another super sector that did well over the year in Minnesota is government, um, gaining 14,151 jobs, which is uh, up 3.4 percent, outpacing the U.S. growth rate of 2.7 percent. And growth was consistent and healthy in all sectors for government. Uh, trade, transportation, and utilities uh, also had uh, good growth, um, more than 7,000 jobs, up 1.3% compared to 0.7% nationally. Um, retail trade and wholesale trade grew 2.4% um, and 2% respectively, while transportation, warehousing, and utilities declined uh, by 2.1%. And then lastly, leisure and hospitality gained um, 6,682 jobs, which is a 2.7% growth rate. And all sectors grew except for uh, arts, entertainment, and recreation. And nationally, the super sector grew at um, 3%. So the five super sectors that lost jobs over the year for Minnesota, um, four of them have been consistent. Um, have, have seen consistent declines for a while. So professional and business services lost uh, about 14,400 jobs, uh, down 3.8%, while the U.S. grew 1% for this uh, super sector. And the biggest declines were in employment services and computer systems design and related services. Financial activities is another super sector um, that we've seen um, uh, declines. Uh, they lost more than 4,600 jobs over the year, so down 2.4 percent, while the U.S. Uh, grew 1.1 percent. And for Minnesota, we saw losses uh, consistent uh, in every sector under this super sector. Manufacturing lost 4,261 jobs, down 1.3 percent, while the U.S. grew 0.3 percent. Um, and the biggest percentage losses were in fabricated metal product manufacturing. 
which is down almost 3%, and animal slaughtering and processing down more than 6%. Uh, information lost more than 2,300 jobs, down 5.2%, and all subsectors um, under information saw decline, um, but the U.S. also experienced decline in information uh, super sector, down 1.1%. And construction for Minnesota was adjusted downward um, and lost about 1,700 uh, jobs over the year, which is a 1.5 percent uh, decrease. And losses were consistent across all sectors except for heavy and civil engineering construction, which we continue to see high growth rate at uh, almost 20 percent over the year. Next slide, please. And as Commissioner Verilak mentioned, wage growth for both Minnesota and the U.S. Uh, are positive and higher than inflation. So overall, for the last three quarters, we've seen more uh, a more tamed inflation rate and a healthy uh, wage growth rate. And that is all I have. Uh, Devin, back to you. Yeah, absolutely. If anybody has any questions, feel free, like I said, to put it in the chat or uh, or raise your hand. Yeah, Kavita, go ahead. Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks for doing the call. Um, Angelina, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the wage trends that we've seen. Um, you know, it, it seems like wages did outpace inflation quite a bit in January. Um, I mean, uh, has that been a steady trend? I'm kind of looking at the last graph that you just um, posted, but uh, if you can just kind of talk a little bit about like, you know, if we're consistently seeing wages outpace inflation here in Minnesota and maybe how long it's been doing that, or if it's been kind of like going back and forth every month um, and uh, and how we kind of still stack up compared to like, uh, I guess, before inflation started getting, you know, increasing a lot. Yeah. Um, so inflation has been uh, very tamed and, you know, in a, in the range that normally we would want it to be uh, around uh, 3%. So since last summer, um, inflation has been hovering where, where everybody wants it to be. Um, wage growth in Minnesota has been a little slower than uh, the wage growth rate in the U.S., but um, it's been kind of... 50-50 uh, when you compare wage growth in Minnesota to inflation. So some months um, in the last three quarters, about a little more than half, wage growth has outpaced inflation for Minnesota. And then the other um, uh, half, uh, it's been close, but uh, has not beat uh, the inflation rate. So overall, we're on a good path. So for the last two months, um, wage growth rate for Minnesota has um, uh, been significantly um, higher than the inflation rate. So we're we're going in a good direction. Um, compared to before inflation went um, high, like so compared to pre-2021, um, I mean, we saw a period of really high wage growth in, you know, um, pre-2021 and the few years pre-2021 um, and inflation was really low at that time. So it was a different economy um, than it is now. Um, but I, in terms of wage growth and inflation now, I think we are in, in decent shape. And then and can you the, say anything? Sorry. Oh, I was just going to add one more. Like, I mean, why do you think you have been seeing such strong wage growth the last two months? I mean, are you getting, are you hearing also from employers that they're doing more to try to attract workers or what's What's kind of fueling the recent um, wage growth the last couple quarters? And sorry, Matt, to cut you off, but yeah. No worries. Go ahead, Angelina, and then I'll just add one additional thought. Oh, I I was gonna say, um, as our labor market is is tight and employers are doing all they can to attract talents, we would expect to see um, higher uh, salaries offered and uh, wage increases. And what I was going to chime in is, uh, please correct me, Angelina, if I got this wrong, but uh, if the question is, you know, in what months are wages outpacing expenses or inflation and, and what does that add up to? I think the original figure we cited was an over the year figure of the 5% uh, wage increase versus the 3.1% um, uh, CPI. So, you know, in the aggregate, all those month by month uh, changes add up to that sort of positive news in terms of affordability for family budgets.
Thanks. Any additional questions? Yeah, Kavita, go ahead. Hi again. Um, yeah, um, Angelina, you know, this was the annual revisions uh, month, so would love to hear a little bit about how the revisions changed our understanding of the what happened in the Minnesota labor market in the last year. I mean, it does seem like December's unemployment rate was revised down, whereas like generally unemployment rate, did it move lower for most of last year? And it, did it change our understanding also of uh, the number of jobs gained um, every month, or was this year a little bit less uh, of big jumps in terms of revisions? Yeah, so the annual revisions this year are small. Um, so the what it changed for the big picture is our labor market is a little tighter than we had originally thought. Um, so overall, uh, the unemployment rate was revised to be lower for um, at least for that last half of 2023, and the labor force participation rate was revised to be lower as well. Um, so both of those mean that um, we have a tighter labor market than we um, than the originally published numbers had indicated. Um, and then in terms of job growth, it was revised um, a little bit downward uh, for for 2023. So overall, um, by the end of 2023, we had about 9,900 jobs uh, less than we originally published. Um, so the total non-farm jobs was revised down or growth rate was revised downward. Private sector gro uh, average growth rate was revised upward. Um, and for 2022, this is going back uh, about two years, the annual growth rate for 2022 was revised a little downward. So overall, the annual gain for jobs in 2023 um, after revision is about 53,000 versus 54,000 um, th that we originally published. So a really small change. Um, it just means that we have we have a tighter labor market than we originally thought. Thanks. Any other questions from folks? If not, I will turn it over to Commissioner Verilek for some uh, closing statements. Should I go off mute there? All right. Well, thank you all again for being here. Uh, as far as closing thoughts, I would just say uh, once again, we're happy to see uh, further job growth uh, and very happy to continue the process of implementing programs to engage more people in the labor force. As a reminder, we have two employment numbers releases this month, which is sort of out of the ordinary, but those of you that have done this for more years than I have will know that it's um, uh, our typical process. So uh, the next employment numbers release is slated for March 21st when we will do February employment data, given that today we talked about January. Um, and as was referenced, um, the reason we have two in this one month is because our uh, LMI team at DEED, along with the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, need a little extra time to do this annual uh, benchmarking process and revision of past employment data and preparation of the first two months worth of the new data. So with that, um, thank you all again, and we will hope to see you later this month.